So uh, right now, I'm on my project's landing page and my project name is Health Link 360. We are a team of three workers and we have created this app for, uh, for uh, patients. Uh, basically, it is about a doctor-patient video consultation app in which we are using AI on the doctor side, which is going to help doctor in, um, in, in, in finding out patients' diseases or any concerns that patients has. And uh, our project is built on the top of Angular, Django and Amazon. And the technologies we are using is first and foremost is cloud. And then we are using PRGS for video call communication and for machine learning uh, things. We are using DeepSeek, uh, uh, DeepSeek, Langchain, and Keras, uh, Keras and uh, TensorFlow in order to uh, in order to make our uh, uh, doctor side more efficient and more faster. So first of all, I'm going to uh, sign up as a patient to book an appointment. Right now, uh, I have created a dummy user for that. So I'm going to log in with that. So my dummy user is ali at deratemail.com. I'm going to uh, type in right now. Let me make it clear. Okay. So right now I'm going to submit the request and the backend is going to authenticate the request and it has authorized the patient. Okay. Right now we are on the dashboard side. This is our patient's dashboard where we can find doctors. We can uh, uh, look for medicines, lab tests. Okay. And this is our functionality which we are going to implement in future uh, in which we are going to check the diseases like carries uh, different type of diseases. And this is the body chart in which a uh, different type of diseases will be shown. If the patient has... Uh, any problem in his leg or uh, in his hands or in his head it is going to be shown here with the red dot and uh, labeled okay so first of all we're going to find a doctor okay i'm going to click on the find doctor okay i have clicked in let's find the doctor for example i am looking for a heart uh, heart specialist doctor i'm going to type h so here i'm receiving dr ahmed khan and his city is karachi if i search for it uh, he is coming right now in front of us as you can see Okay, uh, right now we have the doctor right here. So here is a view profile and a book appointment button. But right now I just want to show the functionality of the book appointment, which is our main functionality. So let's go towards that. I'm going to click on the book appointment. Here uh, we have integrated GPay, okay, Google Pay. So right now what's happening is here, here is that here is that uh, we are going to click on the GPay. I have clicked on the GPay. It is going to process my Google Pay credit card and is going to pay with it. Right now I'm using a test environment. So it is not going to cut any real payment from my MasterCard. So I'm going to click on the pay and it is going to process the request. So I have done it. I'm going to click on the done button and out now and right now I can book my appointment. So as you can see here, um, our time is 6.54 p.m. I can't book an appointment like a, in the past, like 6.53 or 6.52. So I'm going to right now book my appointment at 6.55 p.m. So I have clicked on the book appointment. As you can see, it has generated a no notification appointment book successfully. Right now, after that, we are going to start the doctor patient conversation with the video call. So I am done on the patient side. Okay, so now we are going to check our appointment if it has been booked or not. So Let's move towards appointments. If I click on show appointments, as you can see here, it is saying 6.55 p.m. So my appointment is booked and the join button is live now. Okay, so I can join my appointment. So right now we are going to join the uh, join the call. Okay, so right now I have logged in as doctor and here is our doctor dashboard as you can see. Um, uh, right now I'm going to check my appointments if there are any appointments scheduled for uh, my uh, for me. Let me check. So here, as you can see, I have my appointment scheduled on 6.55 p.m. But before that, I'm going to confirm from my patient uh, if he's free or not so that I can uh, join the call. Uh, right now, I'm going to ask my patient if he's free or not. Let me ask him. Let's click on the send button and let me check if he's free. Okay, my patient is free. So I'm going to say to him, let's start the call and he will join the call on his side and I will join the call from mine. Okay, that's great. Let's move on towards the other section, uh, which is the appointment section. Remember, patient's personal info should be filtered out during video calls with doctors. So here is the port for the OpenAI model and the DeepSeek model that we are using here, the large language model. And uh, for this model, we have a requirement for our final product where we have to add the guard before sending the transcription to the large language model. For that reason, we have built an anonymizer here. So what's an anonymizer do is that it just remove or filter out all the personal identification information of the patient or doctor. So for example, if patient or doctor say their number or their email or any kind of personal information, this personal information will be filtered out and will not be sent or forwarded to the large language model. So how we are implementing is very simple. So here we are using an anonymizer. So it's basically if an anonymizer that just get all the fake anonymizer, it just replace the original personal data. For example, if doctor say his phone number, it will be replaced with the same length of phone number, but it would be fake phone number, not the original phone number that a doctor has said. So here is the fake number, fake phone number function that is using the faker Python library, and it will just generate the US phone number and it return it. After that, I can just use this operator as a lambda function into my phone number operator, and this operator will just anonymize. For example, if the user says its email, it will be filtered out and it will be get replaced with the fake email. Okay, as I have confirmed the patient side that the uh, patient Ali Hussain is free right now. I'm going to join the call and let me wait for him uh, if he comes. So right now I'm going to start the call so that he can join the call. Uh, I'm, to, I'm going to click on the start call. Okay, the patient is being notified and he will be right here in five minutes. Okay, let's wait for him. Uh, as you can see on the right side, the AI is thinking. 
when the patient will come, the AI will start processing a word conversation in real time. Okay. Okay, so the patient is here. How are you, patient? I'm fine, doctor. What about you? Uh, I'm totally fine. Okay. Um, so, what's your problem? So, I am having, uh, I am feeling very tired and don't know lately. I have also had a business cough for a few weeks. I see. How long have you been feeling tired? And can you tell me more about your cough? Is it dry or are you bringing up mucus? It's been about a month now and it's a dry cough. Sometimes I wake up at night with it. Okay. As you can see on the right side, uh, the key points, follow-up questions and the live possible classes are coming. And right now, I am going to ask some follow-up questions from the uh, patient. Uh, can you describe the intensity of your fatigue? So basically, it's uh, on a level of 1 to 10, it's uh, 6. It's uh, really uh, bad for me. Okay. And right now, my key points are loading. And according to what patient is saying, the key points are updating its values. Okay. Did you did your cuff improve during the day? Uh, yeah, uh, in the day it's uh, pretty much uh, good, but uh, at the night time it's very hard for me uh, because I am having a uh, very uh, uh, mild type of cough in the uh, night. Okay, have you experienced any weight changes recently? Uh, no, uh, there is no weight change in the past few weeks. Okay, that's great. And uh, as you can see, the AI is again responding me with the key points and the live possible causes and the follow-up questions. Uh, and as you can see, in the live possible causes, the disease that it is mentioning with the most probability is chronic fatigue syndrome as the patient explained a uh, timely and in timely manner that he has chronic diseases problem of uh, fatigue sorry so uh, right now i'm going to uh, talk with the patient but i can't talk anymore because i'm handling a video tutorial right now for testing purposes and uh, here is the medical record on the left side patient has already uploaded its medical record and i can see all the record of the patient on the left side and if i click on the close button the record is gone so right now i'm going to end the call button and uh, it will be disconnected from the patient uh, thank you patient Thank you, Okay. Now let's move on towards the cloud side. We have created a pipeline uh, to deploy our front-end application. That pipeline name is availability angle front. So in this pipeline, we have uh, given a source. Uh, the source is uh, the repository in our GitHub uh, that we have created uh, in our organization as the FIP. The repository name is Healthly. So what this will do is uh, uh, when we want, when we are creating a build, it needs a source repository, uh, and uh, that source repository can either be in our code or in GitHub or any other version control system. So when we are creating a build, uh, first we have to give uh, the name uh, to that project or uh, to that build. The second step is uh, to give a source. So here we have selected a source provided GitHub. And uh, then uh, here we are connected to our GitHub account. If we are not connected to our GitHub account, then we can connect it by clicking the button, uh, connect to GitHub. Once we are connected to our GitHub account, uh, all the repositories or the, uh, the repositories will be shown uh, in our in a source or in the GitHub repository box. Uh, from there, we can select uh, the repository in that we want uh, to be the source. Uh, here, all the other... Uh, the, all the other options are uh, standard or by uh, default uh, we haven't changed anything in this and uh, then in the build uh, specification here we have to build, uh, provide in build uh, in code build we have to give a build file uh, or build spec file uh, or build spec dot yaml file uh, here we have given uh, uh, and uh, we, uh, we have inserted our build commands into the text box rather than using a build spec file in the root directory of our application because uh, that was creating some issues so we have given uh, the uh, build command directory uh, so what this will do, uh, we have uh, provided uh, uh, some commands. In the install, uh, in the install, we have given a command uh, that is cd front end. So what this will do, this will uh, go into the uh, front end, uh, front end directory. And once it is in the directory named front end, then it will run these two commands: npm install and cli and npm install force. And then once this is completed, it will go to the builder. In builder, we have given one command: ng build force. Uh, build force. Uh, ng build configuration equal to production. And then we have given artifact, and that artifact will be another uh, string. And uh, and then here we have uh, given a bucket, uh, uh, S3 bucket, where uh, our code build log will be stored. Uh, we have selected S3 angular FIP bucket, and uh, that bucket we have given a path effects log. And uh, in the last stage, in the deploy, uh, deploy stage, uh, we have given <coughs> Uh, we have given uh, an S3 bucket to it. So what uh, what this pipeline would do, it would take our repository from GitHub. Uh, it would uh, run a build uh, or a code build. A build would be created. That would be then be deployed to our uh, S3 bucket. Uh, we have created a second pipeline to CHC pipeline that we use from the same GitHub repository that was used by the front end pipeline. However, the difference is that uh, this would go to the backend folder and create the build of the backend. Uh, in the build stage, this would also use a build set file. Uh, in the build file that we have uh, pasted in the uh, root directory or the root directory of our backend project. And in the code file, it will use abstract file that is also present in the uh, root directory of our uh, backend application. Um, here we have created uh, uh, we have created an instance, Django server. The server. What uh, and uh, we, what we have created the server and attached an IAM role uh, to the server. 
so in the IEM, we have created uh, two roles. Uh, one role would be used by one role would be used by the EC2, and uh, the other one would be used by Codeplay. So we have created all the pattern role of Codeplay. Uh, the, the role that will be used by Codeplay, and then we have created uh, the, uh, a second role uh, that uh, all the pattern uh, role for EC2. This role will be used by our EC2 process. Uh, so what this will do is. So this pipeline, uh, the difference is between this and the, uh, this pipeline and the pipeline that we have created for the current run is uh, that in this pipeline, uh, the, uh, the project of the builds will be uh, deployed to the EC2 instance. And in the EC2 instance, we have uh, also installed our code deploy agent uh, from these developers that are provided by the AWS uh, so that the uh, code deploy and EC2 can, uh, can communicate with each other. 